problem with this comment. Say, our God is the God who named the stars. The problem is, two-thirds of all stars that have names have Arabic names. <laughs> I don't think he knew this. That would confound the point that he was making. Arabic star names. Okay, you ready? Here they are. Okay, screen one. Screen two. Every one of these stars, among the brightest stars in the night sky, are Arabic. Arabic. And you say, how does that come to be? How did that happen? Well, first, he said that before I was on his Rolodex, because I could have hooked him up. I said, no, do, say something different. Okay? <laughs> Not that, because it's just wrong. Let's go back in time. How did the stars end up getting Arabic names? We'd have to go back a thousand years to Islam. A AD 800 to 1100. Oops, I can't use AD in this audience. So, uh, CE. CE? C -E? Common error? I don't have a problem with AD. It's just culture, right? I don't have an issue with that. I don't. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with saying, oh my God, I'm okay with that, all right? I, I'm, I, I like listening to Handel's Messiah, okay? I, I'm, I think it's beautiful music, so, but there's more about that. We'll get more in a minute. So, what happened in Islam? Islam, the crossroads. While Europe was disemboweling heretics in Baghdad over that period, were the crossroads. There were Jews, Muslims, Christians, doubters. They weren't, the, the word atheist didn't exist back then. They were all sharing ideas. Great advances were made in engineering, astronomy, mathematics. These three words are Arabic words, algebra, algorithm. Our numerals are called Arabic numerals. Those are the numerals we use, all traceable to that period because they basically invented algebra there. Okay? That went on until the 12th century. You read history books, they say, oh, the Mongols sacked the libraries and Baghdad, and you, there'll be explanations. What they tend to leave out was another force at work, and that was the efforts of this man, Al-Ghazali, who was a Muslim cleric, who was to Islam what St. Augustine was to Christianity. What he did was he took all these ways people were practicing um, Islam, put them together, codified it, said, this is what you need to do to be a good Muslim. Okay, just as what Augustine did, which included how to, how to exactly burn the witches, that kind of thing. So it was all in there, it was all in there. And in there was the statement that manipulating numbers was the work of the devil. And that cut out the kneecaps of the entire mathematical enterprise of that period, because he gained cultural power and political power with his philosophies. And you know something? Islam has not recovered from that since. And there have been times when it has risen to great cult cultural force. In uh, Spain, Islam rose to great cultural heights. No scientific or engineering discoveries in that period. It's tragic. How many Muslims in the world? There's 1.3 billion. Billion. Let's do some analysis. The Nobel Prize, 1900 to 2007. Okay? Let's take a look at how many Nobel Prizes were won by the Jews. How many Jews are in the world? 15 million tops? Let's take a look. Doing it for the sciences, of course. Biomedical, chemistry, physics, economics, 25%, one-fourth of all Nobel Prizes in the sciences have gone to Jews. I saw two people in the back going a high five back there. <laughs> the Jews did not invent the high five, okay? I just want to make that clear. Let's understand that one, okay? <laughs> Do something else. Just <laughs> no, we're happy to share the high five with you. Um, so, let's look at practicing Muslims. Are you ready? Here we go. Zero, zero, one, one. And in fact, the one in physics was a Pakistani Muslim, not a Middle Eastern Muslim. And if you count economics as a science, it's like one, one and a half, two. 0.3% of the total. You want to look at the relative impact? Relative impact, here it goes. The Jews have won 80 times more Nobel Prizes than the Muslims, and they are 1 80th of that population. 
that would be 6,400 times the impact. I lament, I celebrate the Jews, but I lament what might have been discovered had 1.3 billion Muslims had the cultural drive to discover as what happened a thousand years ago. If that had been the case, they'd have every Nobel Prize. If that tradition had continued, but it is gone. It's not there. And that is a loss to the world, especially given the legacy that it had enjoyed a thousand years ago. So I fast forward 